If a three jaw chuck with chuck jaws, how many jaws with the chuck jaw? I don't know, but we're gonna make one of these. Welcome to Wiz Creek Workshop. My name is Yuchul. If you're still using the original key that came with your lathe or your chuck, watch this video because we're gonna make a new one. And the new one, my friend, will change your life. Just as every chair needs a butt, every chuck needs a key. This particular key came with one of the import chucks that I got with the lathe originally. Even then, this is one of the worst quality I've ever seen. Yeah, it does the job, but you know, you want to make a new one. So I did. This one's made out of W1 uh, steel, hardened, and uh, it just works awesome. It's got enough mass that it spins the chuck just perfectly. And the uh, handle is long enough where I can control the amount of force I put on the chuck. And everything was great. Life was going smoothly until I decided to upgrade the chuck. This is the key that came with the new chuck made by Bison. It's overall high quality key. Hardened steel, smooth handle, but again, it's pretty short. And I got used to the heftiness of this one. So today we're gonna make a new one. So we're gonna start with this piece. Diameter is uh, three quarter of an inch. It's just shy of eight inches. We're going to center drill the end so we can use a live center. It's just like anything else in life, you know? Some like it long, some like it short, some like it thick, some like it thin. Well, I like it somewhere in between, but you get to choose what you want. So we're going to turn this down to uh, 0.61 inch. And we're going to leave about one and a quarter inch as is at the end to give a little extra meat for the handle. But you do what you want. I won't judge. Let's look at the finish we're getting. It's very nice. Remember, I rebuilt the headstock and the spindle of this lathe completely. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, I'm really happy with how the lathe is performing. Uh, again, it was a complete rebuild of the, head, uh, the headstock with new spindle bearings and everything. So. We're going to chamfer that shoulder there. Now we're going to clean up the other end. It'll just simply be facing and we'll... Thanks, Cooper. And we'll drill and tap for a set screw that'll hold the handle. And you got a chamfer because all the cool kids do it, right? Alright, we're going to drill and tap the end for quarter 20 thread.
Okay, this is a handle. It's approximately 11 inches long and it is 3 8 inch in diameter. We're just going to clean up the ends and put light uh, chamfer so we don't snag ourselves. That's it. <laughs> We flip the stock around so we can drill a hole for the handle. Now if you're OCD like me and want to make sure the handle lines up with a flat surface on the chuck key, you want to grip it and make sure it is uh, level over here where we just got done flattening, machining. The handle is going to be 7 16th of inch diameter. We're going to work up to that uh, drill size. Now I put a machinist jack under the stock to minimize deflection. Uh, there's a video where I show making those. Be sure to check it out. I went ahead with the deburring tool and lightly deburred the edges. And a uh, curved rounded file comes really handy for finishing the deburring process because the drilling will leave a lot of burrs. The side is almost done. There you go. Using a collet block to hold the material, round material like this while you're filing makes it a lot easier. And here even though we did make it square, we do need to round over the edges because the opening on the chuck have rounded corners and it won't fit. Let me finish doing that all the way around and I'll bring you back. Okay, I got the end all filed and smoothed out. Uh, basically, I just filed it and then I have a bench grinder with 3M scotch Bright wheel and I did lightly polish and just comes out really smooth. It's beautiful. Now once we heat treat this, we'll take it back to that scotch Bright wheel and we'll do further polishing. Now as far as the machining goes, we only have uh, one more thing left. This is the handle. At the center point, we're going to do a little spot drill so that set screw will fit right in there and it'll keep it tight and uh, it'll prevent it from wiggling out.
Well, there it is. Let's see how it turned out. Hot! Just kidding. I decided to harden just the tips. I promise. This end, obviously, because it's going to be interacting with the hardened parts of the chuck. So we do want that durable. Now this end, I decided to harden because the handle is going to be constantly putting uh, stress on this portion and I didn't want this to you know distort and become loose so since we were heat treating this end it was easy to do this now it's ready to put together and use but I like my parts to look shiny so uh, I'm gonna take it over to the uh, scotch bright wheel on my bench grinder and give it a quick buff job. Oh, before I go, here's a Cosmary uh, file test. Pretty hard. I chucked this up on the lathe briefly and used a scotch bright. Just uh, rubbed it a little more to get the finish consistent. Just because I like it to look nice. The square end is really nice and smooth and rounded over. It's all from the scotch bright pad from the bench grinder. <coughs> Remember, I made the indent with the center drill. I followed up with a small countersink bit so that this quarter 20 set screw fits in there nice. You may have to do that depending on what hardware you use. So let's put this together. The handle is really solid. Now, since we didn't harden the handle, we didn't have to use the drill rod. But I chose to use the drill rod because it's just dimensionally pretty accurate. Now let's go over to the lathe and see how it looks. Let's talk about why I decided to make the key as big as I did. This is the original key that came with this chuck. It's really high quality. It's made out of hardened steel. The craftsmanship's really good. But I always hated the fact that it hit the side of the headstock. You have to be completely vertical in order for you to not hit it. The new one, I can turn it. I can use it at the front. I can, it hits this handle, but that's okay. But it completely clears the headstock. 
So I don't have to be in certain orientation. Now this handle is much longer, as you can see. I didn't make it longer so I can tighten this uh, tighter. In fact, I made it longer so I don't over tighten it. Uh, keep in mind, the longer it is, the easier to control the leverage and put in the just amount of pressure you want. You don't want to over tighten the jaws. It's just not good for the chuck. It'll dent the materials. I just found it for me difficult to uh, get the right pressure on there when the handle is short. So it just allows me to better control that. Well, thanks for hanging out with me. It's not a complicated project, but nonetheless, it's very functional and it'll come in handy in your shop. So until next time, thanks for watching. Rawr! 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 Rawr!